Um, hi guys, so like Scopo <laughs> said, my name is uh, Shan, um, and I'll be talking to you about creating Python services using cookie cutters. Um, I'm a software engineer with Telnex, um, one of the sponsors here at PyCon this year. Uh, so a bit about me, is me and my dog, I'm kind of using him for aesthetic purposes. Uh, it's very cute. Uh, so I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I've been, I'm a software engineer on the revenue team at Telnex, like I said, um, and I've been with Telnex for over three years now. Uh, I started in 2019 on an internship, and I've been there ever since, basically. Um, but uh, my background is in network, uh, network operations. Uh, I used to work on the NOC team in Telnex. Um, it's given me a great oversight over software engineering in general. Um, then I took a more specific path into software engineering a few years ago. I uh, got my undergrad from Dublin City University, um, and the reason I am talking about cookie cutters today is because they were a big help for me in my transition from network operations into software development, um, which might have been quite similar, but th where I was lacking was the building a service um, and getting there, um, getting the service running, um, even with Docker, Kubernetes and such. Um, but I could write code, but the actual service part was a bit more confusing, especially with, like, you know, software engineers are very busy. They, they can't help you at all times. Um, so, yeah, that's just my introductions. Um, then for the agenda today, um, so basically we're going to over, go over what are cookie cutters, um, then the advantages of using them as well, um, and the, uh, using cookie cutters with Python, a little demo. Um, not too long, um, should be brief enough, because um, they're not a big topic, but they're a very important topic, I think, personally. Um, yeah, so getting started, uh, cookie cutters are basically an, an application template, or like software engineers often call them boilerplates. Um, uh, so basically, populate a part of an application or service um, all, that are always the same, you know? Like, there's a lot of duplication in services, especially with the introduction of microservices now. Um, and basically, we want an out-of-box, out-of-the-box approach to software engineering and service design. Um, basically, if it works and it's great, then why don't we just replicate that and get that running in like two seconds? You know. Um, so there's loads of like templates that are actually already exist online. Um, look on GitHub, search cookie cutter. You know, you find loads. Um, basically, they're in all languages. Um, we'll be talking about Python today, but they're in all languages. Um, the cookie cutter um, library is in Python as well, but it's still used with React, Django, or React, um, JavaScript, whatever you want. Um, you can also create your own, which is actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Leading up to this, I created a few, and you know it's actually pretty easy. So, um, uh, yeah. So then there's a, the additional uh, feature to cookie cutters are pre and post generate um, hooks. So basically. Uh, you generate your service from a cookie cutter, um, and then you want to like do something extended on top of that. Like, um, for example, maybe you want to like make sure that the code that you have is clean. Uh, you can write a script that will just run after you create the service, and it will check, maybe um, put some styling on it, um, whatever you want. Um, so that's what they do, and that runs automatically. You don't need to do anything. Um, yeah. So, like a lot of things in uh, software engineering, uh, it gets its name from the real world. Um, kind of, you can make like um, a comparison between like making baking a cookie um, to creating a service, right? Um, basically, pick the cookie, cu cookie cutter in this instance. Uh, there's lots of different shapes of cookie cutters, right? Like there's like gingerbread man, square, circle, whatever you want. Um, and once you pick that, you kind of cut the dough using that template or cookie. Um, and then the baking could be compared as an analogy to the developing, whatever you need to do there, and then the extras like uh, Kubernetes, Docker, etc. Um, so choosing your cookie cutter, how do you know like which one to like choose? Um, there's a variety of different uh, frameworks um, and also built-in extras um, uh, in these cookie cutters. So DB integration, maybe you want to see Alchemy on top of that, uh, on top of your just running service. Um, Configurations, like maybe you want a config file or a meta file, whatever you need. Um, API helpers, that's something like a Swagger. Um, you can actually have that embedded in the cookie cutter before, um, before you uh, actually do anything to it. 
and then um, documentation libraries um, as well. Um, and then, like, obviously, you can just build on top of pre-existing cookie cutter templates that are on GitHub. So if it doesn't exist, build on top, why not? Right, so for that analogy, you have something like this. This could be the dough um, in this scenario. And then you have like an AIO HTTP cookie cutter. Um, and you go on and you cut the dough pretty simply. And you get a basic AIO HTTP service. And you still have the cookie cutter. That can be reused whatever many times. And then uh, the fast API cookie cutter looks a little bit different, but pretty similar considering they are pretty similar frameworks. Again, you can cut the dough, and you can get one of them. You can keep doing this however many times you want, and then you'll get something that looks like this. Imagine that as like a bunch of microservices, you know, like that are all pretty similar and consistent, but um, different frameworks, whatever you want. So baking the cookies. Uh, this is something like writing um, endpoints, uh, clients, cron jobs, whatever you need for your service or application, um, and then configure it for dev or any environment that you need. Um, you, you can basically, this is just writing the code, you know, um, it could be compared to that. And now you get like a slightly more brown cookie, um, and that's a baked cookie. So you have your service, it's running, it does what it does. Um, and if you want to add some extras, you can. Uh, a lot of the time these come with uh, the cookie cutter itself. Um, that's probably a good idea because like, um, for those of you that use Docker or Kubernetes, there's a lot of repetition in these. Um, you don't want to have to write this code every single time that you create a service. It's not ideal. Um, and it can be not consistent. You create bugs very easily by doing that. Um, yeah, so that can be compared to the icing, maybe, um, if you want to add it on top of it. So like, why, why bother using them, I guess? This is this slide. <laughs> So quick ramping up of new services. Like I said, like it's going to be a lot quicker to just create this cookie, to create the service from this cookie cutter that does everything for you, basically, to run the service. Um, and avoids menial work. You're not wasting your time on all this menial work that you don't need as software engineers. Like we could be doing more complex code um, a lot faster by skipping all the stuff that we, we just do on a daily basis um, and more time for difficult coding. Um, and then as all of you probably know the tech industry is very fast paced um, it's you need to be quick, you need to be on the ball um, so it's it's a good um tool for that um, it's often not used as much as it probably should be um, even with advanced programmers sometimes they're just like, "Oh, I'm just going to create my own you know um, but it's ideal for making things faster, so why not um, then consistency um, find what works and reuse it don't put in bugs for no reason um, and it maintains a standard of code. Um, so a lot of this gets caught in like um, the pull requests and code reviews. Um, if you do end up putting a bad code or not up to the standard, but um, you can just skip that step. You can skip other developers looking at your code as well um, by just using this cookie cutter. Um, and then you get uniform, uniform cookies or application services. Um, they all look the same. It's easier. So like as an engineer, personally, I think it's easier to go into something uh, that I know. And uh, it's easier to do that with these cookie cutters where I'm going to know every service or the base of every service um, as soon as I look at it, right? Um, I'm not going to have to go sieving through code that I don't know to understand it. Um, and then ease, of course. Uh, Spin up a new application with limited framework knowledge. Uh, this was kind of like my biggest win when I was uh, starting off. Uh, reason being, I didn't know AIO HTTP, I didn't know Fast API, but I was able to create a service without like any kind of like in-depth knowledge, and then look at it after, right? Like I can look at the code that I generated and be like, why is it working the way it's working? Uh, for a lot of students or people straight out of college, that might be like um, one of the main benefits of these. Um, so then you can build on top and learn how they work. Um, even just like Docker and everything, if, if, it's, uh, if it's embedded in the cookie cutter, you can look at those meta files and just be like, ah, OK, that makes sense. Um, and then develop the cookie, the cookie cutter as it's used. That's meant to be a duh, but anyway. Um, so like, uh, maybe it's not perfect, you know, um, but you can develop it as you go along. You know, you can make it better. Um, and with software engineers, 
you could just always just open a request, uh, pull request on a, the cookie cutter. We have a general one at Telnix. Um, any team can develop on it, um, make modifications. Um, we have a few, and they all have different things. They all have different reasons, but the, the majority of the code is very similar. Um, uh, so how to get started? Uh, yeah, okay. So um, like I said, the Cody Cutter library is written in Python, uh, but it can be used with anything, any language. Um, and it can be used directly with GitHub or locally as well. Um, it works off the boilerplate templating library Jinja. And I'd say a lot of you are very familiar with Jinja. Um, it's used on a day-to-day -day basis, basically. Um, yeah, so I created a little little tiny cookie cutter, um, basic cookie cutter. I'm just going to take you through basically um, how to make a service from it um, and then all the parts uh, that I added to it to do that. Um, this is it here. Um, so I just grab my little SSH. Uh, now I want to go. Uh. Basically, all I'm doing here is creating the service um, directly from GitHub. Um, so you can just use your GitHub link. Uh, yep. So these are like um, what Jinja is used for, I guess. You can input like names of your project, all the stuff that is changed every time that you uh, create a new service. Um, so for this, I use um, demo PyCon. Me too. Um, mm -hmm. For the author name and stuff, like you can, that's often used for like obviously Docker and stuff. Um, uh, you can insert it as in real time as the um, application is being um, created with the cookie cutter, and it's pretty cool. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, the create virtual env virtual environment um, option there is uh, for the hook. You can actually insert the um, variables into the um, hooks as they're generated. Make it bigger? Yeah. Yes, of course. There was that. The, ca the text? Mm, I don't. No. Ah. Is that big enough? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and you can insert. Uh, like your host where you want the application to run um, directly through Jinja, um, like so. Um, and these uh, are default, uh, where it says localhost there, the default, you can set that in your config as you uh, create your cookie cutter. Uh, so I'm going to use localhost and port 8080. 80. Okay, that should be created. Don't mind this project. There we are. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. That actually didn't work. <laughs> as I thought it would. Hold on. Hmm. Let me try that again.
Live demos, eh? It is actually in here. There we are. Okay. So this is the project that I created in the first place. <laughs> it's just in here. Um, so basically, I have what I have here is an AIO HTTP project, um, and it should run with just a simple call. Um, I have my README. I have everything done for me, um, just straight off off the bat out from doing the cookie cutter. Just grab this. And what I did, um, there was a hook on my um, cookie cutter that created a virtual environment straight off the bat. I didn't have to do anything. So as you can see here, um, PyCharm actually activated for that for me straight away. Um, but it obviously just sensed that I had a virtual environment. So that means that I don't have to do that, right? Um, and if you wanted to, you could like, in that hook, you could also install your requirements um, straight off the bat. So you can run your server without actually installing anything. Um, I'm just going to install my. Um, oh. <laughs> Caps lock. My arch nemesis. Goods. Um, yeah, so in the README, I have oh, this command to run the server. Oh. I'm just going to want to edit the. Apologies. Yeah, so we have our um, server actually just running straight away. Um, and like that was extremely quick for like just the running service. Um, so if I actually go to my local host now um, and we have a little health point endpoint and you can see that it's running on my local host um, in like five minutes so um, very quick let's just have a running MVP I guess you can add endpoints then and that's like the baking or the developing part of this code and uh, then you can add docker you can add anything you need on top of that or you can add it at the beginning in the cookie cutter um, in terms of what that looks like from a cookie cutter perspective um, like I said, very simple to make. Um, basically, use this, uh, create a cookie cutter and uh, have these uh, kind of fields that you can populate through Jinja templating, um, and just write the code that just runs the server, anything you need at the very beginning, your base, um, basically. Um, and then in terms of what the hooks look like, uh, you have post-generation uh, hooks and then pre-generation hooks. So a script that you want to run either before or after the service is created. Um, this one's pretty simple, just creates the virtual environment, um, like I said, without after the service is created. It's a post one. Um, and uh, you can populate in those hooks themselves um, using the Jinja templating. Um, and that is pretty much me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'll be around. Um, and come to the Telnex stand, because we have so much. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do we have any question from the floor? Oh.
So, um, how much flexible is Cookie Capture in creating, I mean, in, uh, in customizing the creation of a template? Yeah, it's completely flexible. Like, there's no, like, standard of code that you should be using in a cookie cutter. I mean, it's, I use the service here, but you could use it for anything. Like, you know, like machine learning, you can use it for um, any kind of algorithms, anything. Even a script, like, um, if you have a, a particular format that your script should lie in, in your job or in your own standards of code, you can just use that and you can import everything. You can have those hooks to then make a virtual environment and install the requirements. You can use it for everything. And like I said, any language, any framework, anything you want. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. A big round of applause. Thank you.